want to move over because obviously drivers, uh, you know, we're not normally in that spot of making penalties, but we are in the spot a lot of times where we get put into really awkward um, situations like what Braden's talking about, where you're racing in a series and on a track that's really tough to pass. Um, you know, in the go-kart world, we almost end up with the opposite stuff, especially racing with everyone here in single speed where, you know, we go to places like Newcastle or we go to, I don't know, other tracks that still are, are pretty high with tow. And uh, on the opposite end, it's so much easier to pass, especially in the midfield of the first few laps that like, you know, you get frustrated, not because you can't get by a guy, but because a guy that is slower than you still can stuff you, you know, at the start of the race and stuff you back and again and again and again and again. We have almost the opposite effect. But I want to lead into um, the the issue about starts because on back on the other side of the world uh, here at back at Portland, which we already saw um, on our screens earlier of how tricky this opening chicane is again. This is the first corner we saw Jake and the Arkham Menard series West on the final restart. Things get hairy. That was only 16 cars and all of them had fenders where they could touch. We go over to the NTT data IndyCar series and they had a little bit of a trickier start getting their uh, race underway. And it happens almost every time they go to Portland. I think it's very far and few in between. They have double file restarts. And unfortunately for them, with the tracks they've been going to this year, they've had quite a few double file starts that have almost instantly gone yellow with wrecks, whether it's been ovals or road courses. But going here to Portland, you can see right off the bat, okay, we're fanned out. We're already really high speed, which is another thing with IndyCar. All the starts, they can accelerate super early, whereas NASCAR's got a, a start box. Even most go-kart races we go to have a, a single cone or a start box, and they're pretty stringent on that. And granted, the go-kart racing can be a little easier because we typically wave off starts. It's not like a TV format where no matter what, we know we're going green, so the pole sitter may chance it on the off chance that he's going to put it in the official's box, say, look, you need to black flag me and ruin the whole show, um, you know. But in IndyCar, they don't have any rules on that. They can go whenever. So they're going already a ton faster into the corner. You just saw on the screen there Felix Rosenquist, which is the car in third, pop into, I believe, Scott Dixon he got in the back of, sent both him and Polo deep into the corner. They missed the turn. More drivers on there get spun around. Oliver Askew, a go-kart or an IndyCar driver, gets turned. And a bunch got stuck. You can see over here, Elio Castroneves, Romain Grosjean, uh, Kyle Cuthbertson, who's our, our – uh, uh, producer was talking about how Grosjean got mixed up because he thought they were in meters and not in feet and the 300, 200, 100 markers going down into the corner. So um, in any case, it seems like every year the IndyCar comes down to Portland, the start is always super hairy. And I, I don't know if it's possible. I don't even know if it's something worth considering, but at least, you know, in karting, we have a couple of racetracks where we have a chicane right off the bat um, and they'll skip it for the start of the race, you know, and we have it, on the opposite end where NASCAR, when they go to the Charlotte Roval for the restarts, they'll put them in the straight line, but that's before the green flag. You know, at the same way with the U.S. Pro Kart Series, when they go to Road America, they're, the last couple corners are, um, you know, a hairpin section that acts as a chicane. So to get the whole field straight, they skip one of the hairpins. But, I mean, the, if you look at the pylons, especially when you go to the overhead view of what the timing loops are, where they are here, um, and where those pylons are to make that chicane through the SC1 section. I don't see, like, with the track being long enough, if they have enough of a team of guys, they could maybe try to put that out after the field gets through on the first lap and have all the drivers know that by lap two they have to go to the normal course. Because IndyCar does single-file restarts now, so the single-file restarts really weren't that much of an issue, but the double-file ones were. So first, I want to pass it off to everyone because we've had corners like that. And Brandon especially, we're going to kick it off to you, and I know you know where I'm going with this. Um, and unfortunately, you're the only one that has your video up, so this is where we have to go. But this is Scusa Supernats from a couple of years ago on board our very own Brandon Jarsakrak before the pushback bumpers, of course. And it was 180 degree, 100 uh, first corner. And well, you lose about half the field. And there's Brady right <laughs> the road from as well. So, um, Brandon, since it's your video, why don't you take us through first of just honestly what this stuff is like and as a driver? You're kind of just a passenger by the system. You're not trying to be dirty. This is uh, this is this was back in the day before we had the pushback bumpers, like you said. And I mean, at Supernats, back in the day, it was so hard to get through turn one without wrecking. This uh, video you can't see of how many people are pushing behind me. So there's probably about 20 oh, cars yeah, pushing are. behind me just yeah. as far as I'm pushing. <laughs> it's always that. It's always the guy behind breaks. you. It's always the guy behind you. Like, back then in Supernats, I mean, you'd go into the first corner and your rear tires would never be on the ground. So there was no slowing down. It was it was very difficult, especially when you started in the first three rows. I mean, it, you were just praying that you were going to make it through turn one. But going back to like all the 
like we saw it at like road America with people cutting the chicane at the top of the hill. And even like you could see it at Portland with the Indy cars and the NASCAR guys. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is reducing the speed going into the turn one when we have a chicane like that. I think if you reduce the speed and start the race a lot further down the straightaway, you're not going to be going as fast into the chicane. So there's not going to be as much chaos and people aren't going to want to cut the chicane as, as uh, willingly. I think you'd be more likely to make it through there too wide, not necessarily saying it's going to work, but um, I think going slower through there, you'll be more likely to not have wrecks and people cutting the track. Yeah, Ryan, Braden, you guys were a part of that. Braden, you were obviously running in the middle uh, a couple rows up at that Super Nats. I mean, going both on that and as a guy who runs in open wheel stuff on similar racetracks to Portland and being in a similar situation, you can you kind of describe what that stuff's like? I mean, you're, what goes through your mind on a start when you know you've got a terrible corner to start it off? Um, I don't know. I just always feel like you try to be in the top 10, and if you're not, then you're kind of shit out of luck, to be honest. Um, I don't think that uh, I don't think pushback bumpers have made the racing any better. I think they made it a lot worse um, in karting. I think that now you get people that are just side to side contact, euro swerving, and that's way way more dangerous than just bumping somebody out of the way into the corner. So, um, and ultimately, I mean, the the people are replacing their pushbacks every single time they they get pushed in. They're clamping them down. They're putting their bumpers in the sun. Nobody even gets pushbacks when they wreck somebody intentionally. The only time you get a pushback is when there's like some bottle up and then you absolutely like accidentally clip someone. It never, I never see it actually work the way it's supposed to. So for me, the pushbacks are do absolutely nothing but cause problems. And that was the last thing we were going to talk about. You know, we've got this is the fifth full season that we've got it dating back to the US Pro Kart series that debuted the pushback bumpers in 2017. Uh, before we sign off, we'll give everyone kind of closing comments. Ryan, you look like you're ready. What are your thoughts on everything? So this will probably be the one time I agree with Braden on something. Um, <laughs> I really don't like them. Like, I think they've really ruined racing. I think that I, I've spoken about before, but I think the, the contact on the start doesn't outweigh the racing being just overall terrible um, everywhere you go. I think you go anywhere in the world, mid-pack is a block fest because of the drop down. Um, and normally before, if you got desperate and you're coming to the field and somebody's holding you up, you just move them. Um, and that was kind of just like an understanding that everybody had. You have to have respect for the guys that are faster behind you. And if you don't, they're just going to get rid of you. Uh, but now it's like you'll pass somebody and they'll just pod you right back. I'm um, in the center of the corner, drive over the front of you. And it's like, that's just how it is. And so I think it's really ruined racing, the flow of racing. Um, the problem is, is like everybody wants to compare it to cars and they're like, oh, in cars, you don't bump in cars. You don't, you know, but like. There's no real open wheel series that has 40 something drivers every race. And it's not this close. Like it's karting is a contact sport. Like as much as we don't want it to be, it is. Um, and I think taking away the, uh, uh, putting in the pushbacks really, really ruined the racing and made it just hard. I mean, it's hard to come to the field. You don't see anybody come from last to first anymore uh, because they, they don't get the opportunity to, they'll get up to fifth and then have a drop down and you see, so many great races from drivers that started 15th 16th and they come and they win the race and it's like oh for sure they had a drop down so it's like you, you're not you're not you don't even care like if the guy in the back passes you it's like okay he's got a drop down for sure there's like no way he got through the start made all these laps without it i um, mean it's like brayden said we're, we're replacing every time you get a drop down you replace the the brackets you've got the, the nose cone in the sun it's just you don't get it from from what they're talking about. If you intentionally take somebody out, like we all know how to take someone out uh, without it dropping in. It's just like if somebody blocks in the middle of the race, you're just stuck behind them because that's when you'll get the drop down or you'll mess up on the start and somebody will break in front of you too early and then you get a drop down. And it's, it's never ever from like intentionally taking somebody out. It's almost always accidental. I mean, I'm in shifter like over in Europe, I'm sure. I mean, I've, I've heard so many where somebody just missed the shift in front of them and then dropped down. And then it's like, okay, your race is over, like no reason to drive. So it's, I don't know, I've, I've really not liked it and I wish they'd go back. Connor, Paulie, you guys are the closest we've got to the new age. I mean, Connor, by the time you already got into junior, they were starting to use that stuff all over. You don't really know much of what it's like without it. Would you want to see it go away too? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to speak on it because 
Uh, when push push pushback bumpers came in 2017 and at Supernats when I was in Mini, I think, or Pro Tour when I was in Mini. So I didn't really know what the racing was like prior to it in in the upper ranks of Senior and and Shifter. So I can't really speak much on it. Uh, in my time time being, uh, I kind of see what Braden's coming from with the it's it's gone from front to back contact to side to side contact and. You know it is what it is and i mean that's racing and people are going to find a way to get by no matter what and yeah I mean, people know people know how to use how to use their bumper without pushing it in and that's kind of just it's going to happen like that and i mean it's it's kind of a it's a 50 50 sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it doesn't and when it goes your way you're happy with it and when it doesn't go your way you're unhappy with it so it's hard it's hard to speak on it um, i wouldn't I wouldn't really care if it went away. I wouldn't really care if it stays, but uh, it's just a, it's a 50, 50 kind of thing. Jake, Polly, what, what, any other yeah, thoughts from I, you boys? I agree on what everyone has been saying so far. Uh, I feel like we can start eliminating them, especially like in Scusa, they have like all the cameras everywhere to like go over something. And, and I, I feel like if you intentionally take someone out and it's like really obvious, you're going to get a penalty for it anyways. So it's like, well, what's the point of uh, the drop downs if you have the cameras or what's the, what's the point of enforcing the penalty if they have a drop down? Because I know like, uh, you know, I might have intentionally wrecked a few people some t a few times, <laughs> just, yeah. just a few, but, uh, and I've never, I've never got, I've never had a drop down from it, knock on wood so far. But, uh, but then like at Newcastle, it wasn't like, I just got drilled from the rear straight into the guy in front of me. Like nothing I really I can do, and I just I got a drop down from it. So it's I don't know. I feel like some of the stuff it's it's not it's not fair. But then sometimes, like Connor said, it works out for you, and then you're sitting in fourth, and the guy in front of you just got drop down, or you win super nats because of it. But uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. In my opinion, I don't I don't think it it, it really changed the racing. Like uh, I don't really think it bettered it, but uh, I don't know. Well, uh, Jake, we'll let you be the last one to sign us off before we say goodbye and bring the team guys on to talk a little bit different. Um, any other closing thoughts you got on it all? I mean, you've been around. What's your kill shot percentage in terms of taking guys out? Are you clean without any pushbacks too? No, I, I've gotten plenty of pushbacks, mistakes, or just flat out wrecking a guy. But, I mean, <laughs> I wish we could get rid of them because I think, I mean, definitely to me, the racing gets super frustrating when you got a guy from you just white lining the whole track and, you have to worry about your nose and not getting the drop down and you try not to ruin your race, but at the same time, it's getting ruined by somebody that's blocking you and I kind of get frustrated by that. And, um, I wish we could see them go away and just kind of get some of that flow back and just more raw racing. I feel like. Mm. I'm going to, I'm going to add one more thing to what I said. Uh, for the people that do get a bumper penalty, once their bumper is in, one, they get really upset because their bumper is in, and two, they know the race is over, so they don't really care what they do. So they just, they just start taking everyone else out for for fun. And I've done it before too. I, I mean, I'm I'm victim to it. Once my bumper goes in, I I don't really care what happens after that. So it's kind of just it's a demoting feeling when when your bumper falls in, uh, goes in in like the middle of a race. It's like, well, this race is over, and 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 most of the time, it's it's not because I intentionally took someone out. It's they break check me they there was a bottle up in front of me it's never really on purpose so it's 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 difficult <laughs>